Hi everyone, Rebecca here. I'm a teacher librarian in Canberra, Australia, and today I'm going to talk to you about this book, Vincent and the Grandest Hotel on Earth by Lisa Nichol. Uh, now, I hadn't seen this book around. Um, I'm still trying to get into Australian books and books that are offered in Australia because I had been living in Cambodia. I've now been back a year and a bit. Um, and so I'm picking things up and this book has come highly recommended on a, a Facebook group that I belong to so I thought okay pandemic I'm going to be stuck home for a while let's get some books let's read Vincent and the Grandest Hotel on Earth and I'm really happy that I bought it because it is a wonderful heartwarming book with um, a little bit of humour um, it reminded me a lot of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, just for the mere fact that you've got a young boy, Vincent, who is um, living in a struggling town, his parents are struggling a bit, and he gets whisked up into this fantastic world of the grandest hotel on earth. So just the backstory is that Vincent lives with his mum, his dad, uh, his brother Tom, and his sister, whose real name I forget, uh, but wants to be known as Marilyn because she wants to be an actress. And it's the start of the holidays and his grandfather has just passed away and he has left Vincent a shoe shine kit. So Vincent decides that he's going to go to the train station and start shining shoes. And the grandfather had always said that this shoe shining kit had magic in it. And it does because it just brings this most wonderful group of people into Vincent's life. So he's in shoe shining and in comes the owner of the grandest hotel on earth and her concierge and let me just remember their names Florence and Rupert um, and they've got a bag of shoes from their hotel guests that they want shined and they let Vincent shine them and he does this most fabulous job and so they offer him a job in the hotel. Now Vincent is around I would say 10 years old and he might be a little bit older. Um, so some of the stuff that happens in there like you're thinking how can a kid be missing, um, missing school or spending so much time working? What are the laws around it? But this is an imaginary thing happening here. So you know, you've just got to go with it. Um, and so when he's there, the first thing he gets to be involved in is he gets to stay at the hotel at night and gets to see all the wonder that's there and see how this hotel can transform those awful people. Like in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, how you have... Um, Oh, what's her name? Violet Beauregard and um, just these nasty people and you watch them um, have bad things happen to them. It doesn't happen in this book. What happens is that they get transformed and it, it's just this beautiful story. So you see all the richness and magic of, of, um, no, and, and of people being transformed from themselves and, you know, you've got people that are... Uh, um, sad or whatever and they find happiness because what happens is the hotel matches these people to rooms that give them what they need to make them happy. It's really lovely. So you've got that part of the story. Then you've got this relationship building between Florence and Vincent. Uh, Florence's parents are not on the scene. They're off doing wonderful things in the world so Florence has left to run the hotel along with Rupert. Um, and then you also see the relationship build between Vincent and his family. Now Tom has an unknown disability so the parents are having to deal with Tom and they don't give Vincent or his sister Marilyn the kind of neat, uh, kind of attention that they really desire. Um, so there's all this, this stuff about relationships and magic and just how important it is to give yourself some love and find some magic to make yourself happy. Now there is more to the story but I don't want to tell you any more because I think I would spoil it. Really, if you want a little bit of magic, um, read this. Get it for your kids uh, and read it. Vincent and the Grandest Hotel on Earth by Lisa Nichol. Thanks for listening.